Stephanie Shea, Chief Astrologer for JanSpiller.com with your April 2022 Astrological Overview. So we've got a lot of good feeling astrology this month. I'm calling it kind of a feel-good month and most of the month all planets will be direct. We had this back in March. If you follow these videos you'll know that was going on. I encourage you to watch the March video. I always film a month or so ahead so that people can watch ahead and get the big picture but don't skip last month if you haven't seen March yet so for almost all of April as I was saying even outer planets will be direct right up until the end of the month we will have Pluto stationing retrograde at the end of April I'll touch on that towards the end of this video but there's still so much fire energy. It's Aries season for most of the month. And we start out April with a Aries new moon, 11 degrees, April 1st. This is often considered the astrological new year because it initiates the lunar cycle and carries the Aries theme of birth and new action. So this is a big one. I encourage everybody to set their new moon intentions at each new moon. But if you're going to skip one, don't skip <laughs> either of April's new moons. That's right. We have two of them uh, because this first one, April 1st, really is a big one for big picture goals for the year. It's the astrological new year. Then we're going to have a solar eclipse new moon, which most people who follow this channel might have heard by now that the solar eclipses are also high powered new moons and they're great to set intentions to see what you, you might want to unfold in the next six months because eclipses are about six months apart. So you can think, okay, there's going to be a lunar eclipse in November of this year. What would I like to see come to fruition around that time? Set those intentions April 30th. It's at 10 degrees of Taurus. If you were of course born around the days of either of these new moons, if you're April 1st baby or if you are a Taurus baby born on April 30th, this is big time changes coming up for you whenever the new moon falls on your birthday and especially when it's a solar eclipse. So as the month closes we will definitely feel the energy shifting. Much of April's astrology feels really productive and there's probably going to be some issues by the end of the month that have gone unaddressed because there's such a flow. There's Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces that can really create the sensation that things are coasting along. That's not bad. I feel like we should enjoy that because astrologically that doesn't always happen. Uh, but the solar eclipse at the end of the month is going to help us wake up to some of the changes that we need to make. So cruise during the time that it feels good to cruise, but know that eventually there's going to be some things that you're going to want to change. Let's talk about this kind of cruisy astrology. We've got Jupiter, planet of luck and opportunity as a major player this month. Jupiter is working favorably with Pluto, which is always good news because Pluto brings about transformation but often in kind of an arduous process <laughs> and requiring people to have to let go of something, have to go through something that feels very difficult in order to make the transformation that they need to make. But with Jupiter as a supporting player to, to Pluto this month, I think it's going to help people cultivate more peaceful transformation. And as a result, I'm thinking worldwide, maybe some examples of nonviolent protest, making change without as much strife and struggle. Now, the big astrology you may have heard about for April is the exact conjunction between Jupiter and Neptune. It's on April the 12th, and it's a rare event that occurs once every 13 years. And of course, Jupiter and Neptune change the sign that they come together in each year. So you can see we're kind of at the end of the cycle. If it happens every 13 years, that's right, this has not happened with Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces since 1856. So that is a big event. Um, this is the first time 
we've made it through the zodiac for the people um humanity on the planet and we're going to feel the magical effect of this conjunction all month these two planets represent spirituality and optimism they offer hope and faith and it will help us to realize we do have the stamina and skills to work through some of the problems of our time i've really been looking forward to this optimistic astrology and the conjunction initiates a new 13 year cycle that helps people to reshape their visions for the future and beliefs about what is possible now neptune holds a dissolving energy and that really encourages us to let go of limiting beliefs in order to move more confidently towards our goals so the best way to work with this energy is going to be to keep an open mind and invite in information from our higher selves and our higher powers it's not the type of astrology where you power through where you force things to happen this is about being more receptive and realizing maybe you don't have all the answers and waiting for some signs and seeing where that takes you this can open up to possibilities that you didn't even realize were available if you were trying to stick to just the plan you could see in front of you so a bit of magic involved there for sure now april 16th is our full moon it's at 26 degrees of libra i would say with a libra full moon the thing to avoid is relationship drama libra is a partnership sign the full moon can amplify things of course this can go on the positive side of the spectrum just as much as it could fall in the negative it depends on where your relationship is so some couples may be celebrating how great everything is going other couples if they've known uh, something's up <laughs> um, this this Libra full moon could shine the spotlight on it so you can see it more clearly again not a bad thing but if it starts to feel dramatic that's the time to take a step back wait a couple days then address some of the issues that may have come to light at the full moon it's also a great time though this full moon for any kind of shared goals coming to fruition and this is not just in romantic partnership this is any kind of shared goals there's a theme of seeing fair outcomes and highlighting a side you haven't been able to see I kind of see this as a, a good full moon for personal understanding because Libra is the other and the sun will be in Aries it, the self and so other people may serve as a very useful mirror for you so if you start to feel maybe annoyed by something someone's doing that's your cue around this full moon to look and see okay what is it actually that that bothers you about yourself <laughs> some little deep thoughts to to do at this full moon now let's talk about pluto i mentioned that at the beginning pluto stations retrograde april 29th it's going to start a cycle that goes until october 8th this is not as big of a deal as something like mercury mars or venus retrograde because pluto is retrograde half the year most of the outer planets are so we're not feeling it on a day-to-day -day basis but I do see it as kind of a backdrop I've mentioned this in the forecast before and Pluto retrograde can represent an inner calibration of power there will be slightly less emphasis on others and outer world issues and more about what we can control ourselves so thinking about between now and or between the end of April April 29th to October 8th what are some of the things you want to get dialed in for yourself what can you take charge of for yourself it can be a very powerful time but if you're looking for other people for other authority figures to tell you what to do it's not the best time to gather your resources from those external sources you're going to be digging within now let's see what the inner planets are up to we've got mercury in the sign of aries april 1 through 9 so during those days it could be a lot of fast connections communications getting those little things done it's so good under mercury and aries check all the low-hanging fruit off your <laughs> to-do list then mercury goes into taurus on april the 10th the pace may slow but this is really good for following through with some of the things that may have gotten started 
earlier in the month. Um, Mercury and Taurus is nice and methodical. And so it's, it's in general a pretty good month for communications because we're not going to enter the shadow of our next Mercury retrograde cycle until April 27th. So we're getting through the whole month, you know, retrograde free, even shadow free for most of April. And the actual Mercury retrograde, just to give you a heads up, is going to be May 10th to June 3rd. So as we move towards that May 10th date, maybe start thinking about what you want to finish and really avoid starting big new things that are going to take a lot of coordination, knowing that next month, the month of May, yeah, it's going to slow down a bit. <laughs> so start working with what you've got. Um, so we've got Mars and Venus both entering the mystical sign of Pisces this month. So that's going to make it such a good month for creativity, compassion, I think romance. You know, Venus is exalted in the sign of Pisces. It really expresses the highest, most beautiful, that unconditional love vibe. And so romance and idealism, I think, are going to be really abundant this month. Now, when Mars enters Pisces on April 14th, I think we're going to have to consider taking a gentle approach for what works best. And that kind of ties in to that Neptune and Jupiter astrology I was talking about. Also, where we don't want to force things this month. When Mars enters Pisces, it really echoes that as well. It's It could be a natural style for some watery people, people who already have a watery Mars or our water signs. But for anybody who is used to maybe, I've got to make this happen, they may have to adjust how they're going to do things to make it flow better this month. I would say with Mars and Pisces, the thing to watch out for would be passive aggressive behavior because Mars is a planet of direct action. It likes to be bold. It likes to just lay it out and do something about a problem. The thing is when it's in the sign of Pisces, Pisces tends to not want <laughs> to engage in conflict to find some sort of peace. So there's there's a bit of disharmony there. And so people may be trying to find that fine line between being peaceful and asserting themselves. And it can come out sideways sometimes. So just keep an eye on that with yourself and others. Realize, okay, you can still be direct and peaceful. <laughs> that's possible. So that that's the way I would like to work with Mars in Pisces. So that is your rundown for April 2022 astrology. This is, again, one of the more feel-good months of the year. I've been looking forward to it <laughs> since I started looking at it last year as I was going through the year. And um, really get your things going before we hit that Mercury retrograde next month. I hope you have a wonderful month. Use the astrology to your best advantage. Be safe and be well. And I will see you here next time.